Good Lord. This old barrel looks like a sewer pipe in there. <laughs> I guess it's good for nothing now except for a tomato steak. Hi, my name is Jim, and I'm a gunsmith. The name of my shop is Down East Gunworks in the town of Millbridge, Maine now. Used to be in Harrington, Maine, but I've moved my shop down here to Millbridge. And this is how I cut chambers in hunting rifle barrels. Okay, so to give you an idea how I've got this barrel set up, I've already got the four-jaw independent chuck in, got everything dial indicated. So I'm starting back here with the back, I'm going to show you a little bit. This is called spiders on a, on a gunsmithing lathe. Open this up. If you take a look right down here, you'll notice I got these four locking screws here that will line the barrel up in the center of the back part of the spindle. And on this end of the lathe up here, you'll notice I've got the three jaw chuck out, the three jaw scroll chuck, and I've put my four jaw independent chuck in. Now, what I've done here is I've set my dial indicator up. And I have this barrel running true to concentric with the bore as humanly possible. In this case, it's going to have a little bit of play, but if you'll notice right here, I'm actually running down to within one thousandth of an inch. Now, since this is not gunsmithing 101, I'm not going to go into all the details to show you how to, I'll set this all up and how everything's calibrated and stuff. If you're running machinery like this, you should pretty much know how it's already done. I just want to give you an idea of how close the tolerance is already I'm going to be machining this barrel to today. The barrel for this gun that I'm making right now is a custom hunting rifle for a customer. It's a Winchester Model 70. This barrel blank has already been turned. The shank's already been cut, and the barrel threads have already been cut. Alright, at this point right here, we've already used a uh, small boring bar to get our rough chamber dimension started. Some gunsmiths would use a uh, rough reamer rougher, which roughs out the chamber. Uh, I'm only doing one barrel at a time per caliber, so I'm not really going to invest a lot of money in stuff like that. I'm going to take a look at what I am using here, though. You'll notice that I have a floating chamber reamer. What this floating chamber reamer does, hang on a second, let me turn the machine off. Anyway, so you can hear me better. This floating chamber reamer, what it does, you have adjustments here. If your barrel is turning pretty darn concentric, what you want to do is have a floating chamber reamer. You see how this thing can pivot a little bit right there? What it does, it pulls the chamber reamer itself up in alignment with the chamber as you're cutting it. What I'm doing at this point, just roughing the chamber out, is I'm actually going to cut it as a short chamber. I'm going to get it shallow. Then once I get the chamber pretty much reamed almost to within the tolerances that I want, then I'll take the barrel out, I'll install it back on the receiver with the barrel vise, and I'll torque it all the way back down. Then I'll go back with a set of go and no-go gauges, and then I'll use my little hand reaming uh, holder and I'll go back and I'll finish doing the chamber ring in the last little bit, the last 50, 60 thousandths by hand, using a go and no go gauge. What I'll do is I'll ring a little bit and then I'll put the go gauge in and I'll try closing the bolt on it. If it doesn't close, I'll ring a little bit more, put the go gauge back in, try to close the bolt on it. Just about the time I get the bolt to start closing up a little bit snug, I'll switch out to the no go gauge and try to close the bolt on that. If you've got your headspace set properly, what's going to happen is the bolt will close on the go gauge but not close on the no-go gauge. That's basically how you chamber and headspace a bolt action hunting rifle. This rifle here in particular, we're going to make a barrel 4 in 6.5 by 55 Swedish. The customer really likes Winchester Model 70 and likes that caliber. It's got a high sectional density, high ballistic coefficient, low recoil. It's pretty mild. So this is going to be his new hunting rifle, uh, custom line in North Carolina, actually. 
back to my old stomping grounds. So let's go back to cutting the chamber. I prefer to turn in my chambers at a slower speed. Some other guys like to turn their chambers at a higher speed. But I don't want any chatter. I don't want to build up with a bunch of chips. And I definitely don't want to get the rimmer too hot too quick. So what I'm doing is I'm flooding coolant back here by the uh, chamber end, getting some of the coolant up inside. So what I'm doing is I'm feeding the chamber rimmer in by hand. You see it going in? I don't go ramming it in place because I don't want to snap anything off in there. I go up really slow until I start to feel it starting to bite. Then I'll turn it a little bit by hand, my little uh, tail stop. Then very slowly back it out. You see all my chips starting to form up down here. It's not rocket science, believe it or not. It's just a matter of going slow and being patient. in a while what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop what I'm doing and stop cutting. I'm going to reach over here with my air hose. We'll come right up here on this end and just blow air down the muzzle. Clean some of those chips out. The ideal thing is you don't want to build up a bunch of chips and stuff inside there to jam up against the ringer cutter. You don't want to break anything. General rule of thumb for these little reamers, you can get maybe about seven to ten chambers cut before they need to be resharpened. So they don't have to spend a bloody fortune on that gum reamers. I have about three or four reamers here for cutting chambers of common calibers like 223, 308, and 30 out 6. Others, I basically rent them because it's a lot cheaper just to rent your reamers then ship them back to the company, they resharp them, regrind them, do whatever they need to do to them. That way I don't have a whole lot of money tied up in all my reamers. Alright, I've got the proper size stop collar set on the reamer right here. So basically what we're doing is we're reaming this thing until the stop collar makes contact. Ah, oh, look at all those nice metal cutters. When I got down close to the end, I had to use some uh, cutting oil on it instead of using the liquid here. I was trying to keep it cool as long as I could. Here, let's blow some of these chips off. I was trying to keep the ringer as cool as I could until I got down to the point where... There. Now. Let me go up on this end and blow some of the metal shavings out. All right, let's move this back out. Now you see what used to be the rifle chamber right here. Or it used to be barrel, now it's rifle chamber. Nice big fat hole. Okay, so I'm going to pull this thing here apart, get the barrel cranked back into the action, and then uh, we'll take the rimmer, put it in the hand tool over here, and I'll show you about getting the final headspace done. The last 40, 50 thousands. Now a quick word about these uh, chamber reamers right here. You've got two types. You've got those with a solid pilot, then you've got these like this one right here that has a, a free floating pilot or a little uh, pilot with a little collar on the end. So let me remove my stop. We'll get a close up of this thing. 
Come back over here. Now chamber reamers are going to come with a little screw head on the end right here if you get these little uh, little uh, pilots that rotate. See that little end right there? I kind of like these a little bit better because if you're going to be cutting something really precise you can get different size pilots in different measurements. And what you do is you can, you can change this bushing out right there. Basically as the chamber is being cut this little rim, this part of the rim right here is going to slide up into the bore of the rifle and actually spin. All right. Reason I like these a little bit better, the solid pilot reamers are not bad. They'll keep their self lined up pretty well. But the old way of cutting with those solid pilot reamers, sometimes you run the risk of having, say for example, you have a bore diameter that's a little bit tight of a fit on here. And you're running that in there and it's spinning. You run the risk of messing up the rifle a little bit. But by having these little reamers with the pilots that you can change, you can get one that's specifically for the bore of the rifle barrel that you're cutting. And uh, instead of the whole thing spinning, the little pilot itself just goes in and it turns It's right here like this. So you're really not messing the rifle up with those. Now, do the final chamber and head spacing on this thing. I've already got the barrel in the barrel vise and I've already got the receiver torque down to it. So now what I've got done is I've put my chamber reamer in this little hand tool right here. Put plenty of lube on it. And what you'll do is very carefully slide it all the way up inside. And when you're cutting this thing by hand, remember now you're only down to your last 40, 50 thousandths. So what you're going to do is you're going to turn it Just like that, pull it out as you're turning it in the same direction. What you never, 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 never want to do, and I mean never, is ever turn your chamber reamer the opposite way because what you can do is chip these little cutters on the flutes up here. Always turn in the direction of the cut, going in and coming back out. Now I've already off camera have already done this. I didn't put the cutter all the way in so there's no more metal shavings in here. I, I, this is kind of a trial and error thing that you want to cut a little bit, pull it out, blow your chips out, and then you try with the go and no-go gauge. In this case the no-go gauge here has a red band on it. If you can see it. The go gauge doesn't. It's also marked no-go and go. What you want to do is be able to get this thing to where when you put the go gauge in, the bolt handle goes all the way up and closes fully on the go gauge, but it's not it's going to close not fully not not going to close fully on the no go gauge. In other words, it'll stop along about here or somewhere in here, but not all the way down. If the no go gauge is in the gun or in the chamber, and you can close it down right here, then you've cut the chamber too deep. What you have to do then is go back. Take the barrel back off, go back to the lathe, roll the shoulder forward a little bit. You may have to do something with the face back here. But I've got a dummy cartridge. This has already been cut, already been head spaced off, off camera. I'm just explaining it right here for uh, lack of time. But with this dummy cartridge, and I've got my extractor claw back in there again. Take the dummy cartridge here, you can stick it in. And you see it ejects. That's just basic 101 of chamber cutting. Now my way is not the only way this can be done. There's a lot of measurements that I did not show because I'm not teaching gunsmithing. If you're interested in learning that, I'm going to recommend that you go to a gunsmith school. There's several nice ones around the country. If you don't have money to go to a gunsmith school, I'm going to recommend if you're wanting to do correspondence, Get the AGI, American Gunsmith Institute series videos. They go into a lot of detail and explain how all the measurements are done and how to cut these chambers yourself. If you've got a small lathe at home or even a larger one like I've got, this is the way you want to cut your rifle chambers. Thanks for watching this latest video. Down East Gunworks is now shifting towards building custom rifles. If what you see in this video interests you or 
if you have a special project in mind, contact the shop through Jim at DowningsGunWorks.com. Special thanks to the folks that contributed to this project.